Welcome to American History Lesson 5. Developing a New Nation. Our lesson objectives are identify and understand the strength and weaknesses of the newly created United States. Identify the struggles faced by the United States. Identify key figures responsible for the creation of the American government. The Challenges of a New Nation. Having declared their independence from Great Britain, the states faced a formidable challenge of forming a new government. American leaders did not want a pure de democracy that allowed the uneducated majority to have power in the government. These leaders preferred a republic in which people were ruled through elected representatives. They wanted a national government, but with limited power. The state constitutions created governments with limited power that guaranteed freedom of speech, religion, and the press. In some states, all white males were allowed to vote, while in others, only white males who owned property could vote. African Americans and women were not allowed to vote. New Jersey was the exception. In creating a new government, the Continental Congress struggled with three issues. The first involved representation in Congress of different sized states. Congress decided that each state would have one vote. The second had to do with how power was distributed. Congress created two levels of government with the Articles of Confederation. The national government had the power to declare war, make peace, sign treaties, borrow money, create a postal service, and deal with Native Americans. State governments retained many other powers. The third dealt with land west of the Appalachian Mountains. States with claims to Appalachian Mountains gave up those claims to the national government. The Northwest Ordinance of 1787 determined how the territory would be settled. Congress divided the land into three to five territories. Once the population of a territory reached 60,000, the people could ask Congress to be admitted as a state and would have the same st status as the original 13 states. The Articles of Confederation had some weaknesses. It lacked national unity because each state acted in its own best interests, regardless of the effect on other states. The Articles required the approval vote of all states to make any changes or amendments to the document. Finally, because the states refused to allow Congress to impose tax the nation could not pay its war debts. The war debt caused other problems. Creditors wanted the states to impose higher taxes so states would have money to pay them, but these high taxes sent many of the nation's farmers into debt they could not handle. The nation had foreign relations problems. The British were still a threat to the new nation in the West. Spain closed the Mississippi River to American businessmen, and this made it hard for the Western farmers to get their crops to market. Because of these taxes, farmers in western Massachusetts launched a revolt in 1787. In May of 1787, delegates from every state except for Rhode Island came to Philadelphia, hoping to fix the problems of the national government. Instead of fixing the articles, they decided to create a new form of government. There were two main concerns. First, how should power be distributed between the state and national governments? Second, how could the wealthy and more powerful be kept from dominating the small farmers and workers who made up the nation's majority? The delegates considered two plans for representation in the new government. The Virginia plan was favored by larger states by calling for two houses of Congress in which the number of representatives depended on state population. Smaller states favored the New Jersey plan, which gave each state an equal vote in a single House of Congress. Roger Sherman resolved the problem by proposing the Great Compromise. Sherman's plan made two houses of Congress, and the lower house representation would be based on size and delegates elected by popular vote. In the upper house, each state would have the same number of members. They would be chosen by the state legislatures, thereby giving the states some power. The Sherman plan was approved by the delegates. Then delegates considered whether slaves should be included in the population count. The northern states with fewer slaves believed they should not. The southern states with many slaves believed they, believed they should be counted. A compromise was agreed upon which counted three-fifths of the slaves and postponed the abolition of slavery until at least 1808. 
The delegates divided power in two ways. The national government had such powers as regulating trade between states. Delegates divided power within the national government by giving the legislative branch, the two houses of Congress, the power to make laws, the executive branch power to carry out the laws, and the judicial branch power to conduct trials. Through this system of checks and balances, they tried to ensure that no branch could abuse its powers. The delegates feared that the people did not really know what is best for the country and devised an indirect system of electing a president known as the Electoral College. This Electoral College is still in place today. Delegates created the ability to change the new constitution through amendments or changes. Finally, the document went to the states for approval. Constitutional Convention delegates believed that most state legislators would oppose the new government because of the reduction in states' powers. To solve this, they created an approval process that did not go through the state legislatures. Each state was required to hold a special meeting to vote on the plan. After nine states approved the Constitution, it would become the basis for the new government. Supporters of the Constitution called themselves Federalists. They were led by George Washington, James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, and John Jay. The latter three wrote essays in support of the Constitution, known as the Federalist Papers. Federalist supporters tended to be city dwellers in the small states. To, visit, to read the Federalist Papers, visit the link below. Anti-Federalists were op opponents of the Constitution and included Samuel Adams and Patrick Henry, who were considered heroes of the independence movement. Their argument was that the new government would have too much power. Larger states and those who lived in rural areas tended to oppose the Constitution because they would lose some power. In arguing their position, anti-federalists attacked the Constitution because it did not guarantee individuals' rights. The Federalists responded by promising to add that protection through a Bill of Rights. Fun fact, Benjamin Franklin, Pennsylvania, was known as the sage of the Constitutional Convention. He was also the mediator at the convention and often, com often counseled that we are here to consult, not to contend. Delaware was the first to ratify the Constitution in December 1787, and the following June, New Hampshire became the ninth state to approve it. The Constitution officially became the law of the land. By July 1788, New York and Virginia, two strong states, ratified the Constitution, although the votes were close. Shortly after that time, James Madison wrote some amendments that intended to guarantee individual rights. Congress approved 12 of them in September 1789 and submitted these to the state legislature for final approval. The states agreed upon 10 of the 12. These are known as the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights are the first 10 constitutional amendments that guarantee each citizen freedom of speech, religion, the press, and political activity. At this time, Native Americans, African Americans, and women were not included. What next? Take the time to go back and review the lesson on your own. After your review, complete the lesson review for the lesson and submit for grading. Remember, your submission should follow all the rules for standard written English. All submissions must be written in your own words and sources used cited at the end. How to cite sources in APA format. When you reference a source, with, a source within an APA-style paper, whether it is using a direct quote, repurposing an image, or simply referring to an idea or theory, you should insert an in-text citation, the author's surname and the date of publication within parentheses, straight after a direct quote. Citationmachine.net will assist you in creating citations.